Okay, so if you're familiar with the term Mason-Dixon line, then you might have some background to the significance of this next story. The Mason-Dixon line, these days known as the figurative political and social divide between America's northern and southern states, was originally the border between Pennsylvania and Maryland. It was created by two Englishmen, Charles Mason and Jeremiah Dixon, to legally separate the disputed territory of the Penns to the north and the Calverts to the south. They did it by surveying the land over a four-year stretch, something they finished in 1768. Well, that started a trend, and by 1785, the U.S. set up a survey system so they could sell off sections of land to pay off debts like those from the Revolutionary War. From the point of beginning between Ohio and Pennsylvania, that system spread west with the acquiring of more land. Each territory had to figure out their own starting point, though. Idaho's was figured out on this day 156 years ago. There are countless moments in history, points in time, where one can point from where everything evolved. For Idaho, that point is set in stone in the southwestern part of the state, known as the initial point. So the initial point is the place on the map where the principal meridian and the baseline meet. The principal meridian, the main line going north and south, and the baseline goes east and west. Terms that may not matter much to you, but they are critical to the public land survey system. Which is how all of the land in the American West uh, was divided and cut up and then made available from 1785 uh, through most of the 20th century. Here's the cliff notes. The land ordinance of 1785 set this survey strategy in motion as a moneymaker for the federal government. Points were picked and the land was laid out in 160 acre plots as the United States spread westward. Nearly a century later, it was Idaho Territory's turn. So President Andrew Johnson appointed Lafayette Cartier as Idaho's first general surveyor in 1866. And the very first step in that process was establishing the initial point. The instructions given by the General Land Office, it had to be a high spot or at the confluence of two streams. Cartier went high and chose this volcanic bump 20 miles outside of Boise. And it was established on April 19th, 1867. That wasn't the only significance of this spot. So the principal meridian had to radiate north to cover the entire panhandle, and the baseline had to radiate east and west to encompass the entire southern portion of the territory. Any survey that happened across the territory of Idaho would radiate out from that point on the landscape. Seems simple enough until you realize how they did it. They literally were working with chains and links, and they were literally out on the landscape walking with these chains. Imagine walking a straight line, measuring around mountains and into canyons and across rivers, 66 feet at a time. <laughs> wow, how long did that take? Decades. There were sections of the state that were still being surveyed and resurveyed well into the late 20th century. Whether it's on a map or in person, you can actually see how it all lays out from initial point. Anyone lives on or is familiar with Meridian Road, that is the principal meridian in the state of Idaho. Is that why it's called Meridian? Correct. Was it perfectly plotted? Not always. During a dedication of initial point for Idaho's territorial centennial celebration in 1963, organizers pointed out that wasn't on purpose. Let's be tolerant of these old boys who did the pioneer work for us. I do not say that there are no fraudulent surveys, but generally, we find that the errors are honest mistakes made by honest men. Idaho is especially fortunate in this regard because few of her surveys were made by this method. But she was made from this point, the importance of which should be anything but blunted. Because without that moment in time, we wouldn't have homesteads, we wouldn't have had, you know, the mining claims. That set in motion the development of the territory, which of course set in motion the economic development, the arrival of people of different cultures and ethnicities and experiences and backgrounds, which made this, this territory and then later the state what it is today. There it goes. That viewing platform for Initial Point was first built in 1962, but it has been vandalized significantly several times over the years. The brass marker has been spray painted, shot up, straight up stolen. One out there now has luckily been there in place since 2008, just set in concrete. Lafayette Cartier and his brother-in-law, Peter Bell, they first surveyed 
the southwestern part of the state from initial point there down in well, southern of southern part of the state to the southern border. And then they went from Oregon to just east of Boise. So they got that out of the way. But after that, surveyors then went north into the panhandle because, well, they needed to figure out mining and timber territories because that was, well, people were trying to harvest that. By the way, Idaho and Montana are the only two western states with their own initial points and the only initial points in the state.